It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and maintenance in La Jolla, California. Many of you remember this vertical planter that went up in this installation about five years ago and it has been manipulated quite frequently because it is a vertical things get leggy things fall out gravity takes its toll you know we're always fussing with it but it really doesn't take much this has been up here in this spot for the last three months without any attention care water nothing and i think it looks pretty darn good I do see some gaps that I'm going to want to fill. Remember this frame is, is filled with sphagnum moss. There is no soil and all of these plants were started in here as cuttings and are sticking in a chicken wire frame. So I'm going to take this down and lay it on the ground and just water it this way. And you want to make sure that you measure your water, that you're very specific, that no one plant gets more water than another. This is science, people. You have got to be careful and measured and very specific with your watering. I hope nobody blinked. I hope you got that. So yeah, so basically we're gonna slop water on it. Now what's gonna happen is that water is gonna soak the sphagnum moss and all of those little air roots that have knitted together in the moss are going to get hydrated. When I am done with maintenance today, I'm going to hang this back up on the wall and then fill in some of the gaps with some cuttings. Okay, so now that we've got the vertical watered and hung back up, you know, now's a good time before I start plugging in some cuttings to maybe refresh some of the sphagnum moss. You know, if I see some areas that look a little light, can tuck in some more moss. Dry or wet, doesn't really matter, but if you're gonna be gluing your succulents in, you wanna make sure your moss is dry. Okay, then, this little Echeveria harmsii, how fabulous is this? I'm gonna take cuttings from it. See, it just looks better if we limb it up. It looks cuter in the pot like that. And then I've got all of these fantastic rosettes that I can put into the vertical. I'll just take a couple to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, now, huh, all right. I'm just gonna take these and see there's so many mature things in here that I don't need glue. I can just take and pop the cuttings in and the weight of those existing plants are gonna hold all of my cuttings in place. And this little Crassula Argentia Sunset, we know it's gonna lose its color, but who cares, you know, for a few months? Look at that, it's gonna be so awesome. So I just gathered up some plants from around the yard, just some little cuttings. How fun is this? You know, some people complain about verticals being too much maintenance and not practical, but I don't agree. I think it's fun to fuss with them. Look at how pretty that tomentosa looks in there. Just so fun to putter. And this garden um, is a microcosm, really. I mean, this is a garden in and of itself. We have probably 25 or 30 different types of plants growing in this tiny little space. So how fun. So you get the idea. I'm gonna keep puttering around with this for a while, but I encourage you to consider vertical gardening if you haven't already. Have fun with it. Make sure that it gets dappled sunlight and that you don't have it in full blasting sun. Uh, and just, you know, splash some water on it once in a while. Have fun with it. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity reporting from La Jolla, California with your succulent tip of the day.